Okay, so after all the messing around, I decided to actually just move the TV back to right here on top of the media stand. Originally, I wanted to get rid of it and maybe put on the legs that it came with because I thought that was pretty cool. But then I didn't know what to do with the cables and stuff under it, so I feel like it's one of those things where like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But I am super happy with how it turned out. This is the Samsung Serif TV and I got the 55 inch version. And the reason why I chose this TV was number one, it was on sale for Black Friday. But number two, I really like how it actually looks almost like a sculptural piece on top of this. Something I really didn't like about my last TV was that I feel like it was a real eyesore in the space because it was just this like black box in the middle of a room that was predominantly wood and cream and like kind of lighter tones. And so I'm super happy that I went with this one because even when it's off, it doesn't stick out at all. It blends in with everything else really well. And one really cool thing that I realized is that it's called the Samsung Serif TV and I wasn't sure why it's called Serif, but it's actually because this side shape right here is in the shape of an eye and it's in the Serif font. So they called it the Samsung Serif TV. But I thought that was cool because the main font that I actually use for all my videos, which I get questions about a lot, is the Serif font. So it kind of feels like this TV was made for me a little bit. Another thing that I really liked is this ledge right here is actually wide enough to be able to fit something on top of it. So if I wanted to, I could actually use the top of this TV almost like a shelf. Another cool thing that I just figured out is that you can actually set art on the TV like this to play when you're not using the TV as an art piece or a wallpaper. Like looking at this here, I wouldn't associate it with a TV. It looks so much more like part of the room or a dynamic piece of art. <laughs> Okay, so I know I was just supposed to move the TV, but everything was already out and honestly, I was kind of getting tired of my old living room layout because it's been like that for around six months. So I decided to go crazy and switch up the entire layout of the living room. It's not too different, but I switched the orientation of things a little bit and I feel like it feels a lot more open and I feel like the TV looks really good in the space because of the white border and just like the overall details of it. Let me show you around. So as you can probably tell, the main thing I changed was the orientation of all the chairs and the sofas. So I took this sofa, which used to be this way, all facing the TV, and placed it along the windows. So this way, when you first enter the apartment, the first thing you see is the sofa and kind of how it opens up to the rest of the space. If you've been following me for a while, I actually used to have a setup pretty similar to this, where I had this sofa here, and then I had another one across from it, but neither of them were directly facing the TV. I think that might be a little bit counterintuitive, but honestly, most of the times when I'm watching TV, I'm going to be laying down kind of like this. So I honestly don't really mind it at all. The other thing is though, I feel like the reason why people think that the sofa has to be facing the TV is because most of us have kind of developed the idea that the living room's purpose is to watch TV. Obviously, if you've been watching, you know I do watch a lot of TV. I play Xbox and stuff like that. So I'm still gonna be, of course, using it. But the main goal here was really to open up the space a little bit more and make it feel kind of like more welcoming and also conversational. So it's more of like an area where people can like get together and have fun and relax rather than like just like a movie theater, basically. The only thing that I'm not really sure about this layout is probably this area right here with this chair and the side table. This is actually not even like a living room chair. This is supposed to be a dining chair. I feel like realistically, I would never actually sit here. And something that I've talked about a lot on my channel is how I definitely prioritize function over form. And so like, I'm not gonna purchase something or set a space up just because it looks good if I'm not actually gonna use it or if it's not functional at all. And so I have this here just because if I remove it, you can kind of see this. If I take it away, it feels just like a little bit too empty here. So let me know if you have any ideas on what I can do with this space. But right now what I'm thinking of doing is either just keeping that chair here and maybe replacing it with a more comfortable one. Or the other idea I had was I mentioned earlier my old setup. I used to have two sofas facing away from each other. So I've also thought about putting another sofa like in this general space right here. So we'll see. But for now, I'm pretty happy with it.
winter is definitely in full swing now, and while I'm not a cold person, something I do really like about the fall and winter season is that I can wear a hoodie pretty much whenever I want to. And my hoodies are actually something that I get a lot of questions about, probably my favorite piece of clothing. So I feel like I've developed like a super specific taste in particular when it comes to hoodies and finding the ones that I think are perfect. So I'm gonna go through my entire hoodie collection and hopefully it can help you guys this winter season to cozy up a little bit. Okay, so to kick things off, I have five of these Exhibit A hoodies from actually my friend Cole Henry's brand. I'll make sure to link his Instagram in the bio as well as basically all these hoodies so that you guys know where to get them from. The inside of these ones is this super cozy fleece material. In general, actually most of the other hoodies that I have are not fleece on the inside. I found that fleece starts to pill really quickly and so you'll get these sweatshirts that end up having like, I feel like you guys probably know what I'm talking about. It ends up getting like roughly textured on the inside of them with the fleece and forming like these little annoying balls that are uncomfortable. But I really do love these ones. So I actually have four other colors, which I'll show you real quick. Okay, I lied. Three other colors, because I think my girlfriend has the last one. And real quick, I guess I'll just talk about what I personally look for in hoodies. The first thing I look for, obviously, it has to be comfortable. And for me, that means usually a pretty oversized fit. Number two is what I was just mentioning, the build quality of it. And the last thing is actually the way that it fits on my waist. So if you'll notice, and I think I talked about this a little bit in the past, I really like all of my hoodies to finish just above the waistline. For reference, I'm 5'10", so I'm not... Actually, am I short? I think that's average height. <laughs> so I'm not short, I'm also not super tall. And if I really pull this down, I just feel more compressed or shorter versus when it's normally fitting like this, I just feel like it makes my legs look a little bit longer and overall just like complements my body a little bit better. Okay, so next up I have this hoodie from Cole Buxton. This one, if I can show you, is more in this loop back terry material, which is not as soft on the skin, but it lasts a really long time. Next up, I have this hoodie from a brand called Get Some Sleep. Again, obviously it fits pretty much the same as other ones, so it has like a bit of a cropped fit, pretty oversized and spacious. But the really cool thing about this one is half of it is sewn inside out. And so you can kind of see here that this is actually the material that is usually on the inside of the sweatshirt. And then this is the material that's usually on the outside of the sweatshirt. And so they kind of fuse them together where it shows both of the textures, which I think is really cool. And it's one of the reasons why I bought this hoodie. I also think that the Get Some Sleep brand is also like very <laughs> on brand with me since I do like my sleep a lot. These next three are from a brand called Studio Du Jour, which is my friend Nathan's brand. Probably the most frequently worn hoodies that I have just because I think they've really nailed the fit with these. This is, I would consider probably like what my idea of the perfect hoodie is. Although like all of these hoodies that I'm showing you guys, I consider like pretty much close to perfect. I'm sure you guys have seen me wear this. And I have this exact same hoodie in this brown color, as well as this really nice cobalt blue color. Speaking of color, this is a Yeezy Gap hoodie. I also have this one in black. This is the only hoodie that I have that is actually double layered. They took two individual hoodies and sewed them together. I can try to show you guys, but this inside fabric looks exactly like the outside. And that's because again, this is literally just two hoodies sewn together. Because it's double layered, it has this super like slouchy and heavy silhouette that I really like. But that also means it gets really warm. So I can't even wear this inside most of the days. Like I'll wear this when I go out. If you throw this one on and just like a jacket or a windbreaker on, I'm pretty sure that you'll be set for the winter. So that is my entire hoodie collection. I'm curious to hear if you guys have any other hoodie brands or hoodies that you guys think I should check out. And yeah, stay cozy this winter.